What if Bayonetta 3 was released in 2019 to 2020? We're talking about a release of a teaser trailer at the Game Awards of 2019. So in this alternate universe, Bayonetta 3 is released on the 19th of December of the same year. In order to satisfy the insatiable desire from elite Bayonetta fans who cannot wait for this game and have said that their hope for the game had died, Platinum Games had decided to finish this game's development in October of 2019, even though production only started in early 2017 or maybe even January. January 2018 at the latest. Remember, the virus has not reached global numbers at this point in our alternate timeline. But at the same time, in order to finish Bayonetta 3 by October, other projects such as Astral Chain and the foreshadowed Project GG were halted in order to give support for Bayonetta 3. Would it have been a success? Let's deduce it. Platinum Games is a big company with over 224 employees. It's quite big, but not as big as other developers out there like Squaresoft who have over 4,601 employees as of 2019, fitting for our alternate timeline. Bayonetta 3 in this alternate timeline is the fattest project yet with only two years to complete. The trailer is reposted all over the Bayonetta side of Twitter and Reddit, but not as big as you think. It's been two years since the teaser was released. Even though Bayonetta 2 was revealed in 2012 and released in 2014, there was a change in producer and was quite a small game. A similar thing would have happened in this alternate universe without the change of producer. The game wouldn't have been the biggest and craziest hack and slash game of all time as they've stated. Remember this video showcases what could happen if they sped through production. Bayonetta 3 hits the shelves and there are no legal social distancing rules in place yet. It's been only two years. The hype is there, but the mystery-induced high isn't. Let me explain. In our timeline, the mystery is the marketing. Even though some people see it in a different way and say that Bayonetta 3 wasn't marketed well, I believe its mystery is what filters the true fans from the casuals. We are in 2020. Assuming they start development in early 2018, two to three years is not a long time for developing a full game, even if you had over 224 employees. We would be seeing a rushed game that did not go forward with moving on from their orthodox method. Methods. Nintendo has offered to globally release it simultaneously. Two days pass and the game has reached YouTube headlines. Well, in the small hack and slash sector of YouTube, of course. You still have YouTubers in the 500,000 to 1 million fan base range posting their review and thoughts on it. It receives mixed reviews in need of a DLC. Most reviews of the game say that it felt short and basically like a Bayonetta 2 part two. Super Butterbuns uploads Bayonetta 3 for beginners as their next installment for their Bayonetta for beginners series. But I almost forgot a new competitor in the lobby. Twitch will be the main place where streamers have streamed Bayonetta 3 with a decent audience. YouTube would be a place where they posted their highlights as I've said before. Veteran Bayonetta players like Yoshesk and Creative Handle would continue their respective retrospectives and mods for the new Bayonetta game. They seem to feel accustomed to it as it follows the game mechanics of Bayonetta 1. Strict time limits are now a Bayonetta 2 exclusive and a thing of the past. If there is a PvP mode in Bayonetta 3, then it would increase its watchability on Twitch and maybe even a small competitive scene. However, due to the rush in production, there are many patches that need to fix a lot of bugs for online mode, a new thing for the Bayonetta franchise. This would have been annoying for Kamiya san since he doesn't necessarily like updates or DLCs for his action games, especially Bayonetta. He wants people to play for what they pay for according to one of his interviews. Super Smash Bros Ultimate would get their new reskin of Bayonetta. Spoilers of this game in this alternate universe would be inevitable as with any other game. But is there even a story to spoil with two years of development? Well, I think yeah, Bayonetta 3 is now being written by Hideki Kamiya who has even plans for Bayonetta 4. The story would be in the same tier as Bayonetta 1 so watch out for spoilers peeps. Anyway, in this new alternate timeline, Bayonetta 3 is a hit. But it would have had the same impact that Bayonetta 2 had. Maybe even less because it's released on one platform. Not many people were happy about that. At this point in this timeline, the Rakonex of this alternate universe wouldn't have gathered a following. Bayonetta 3 is released, Bayonetta 3 theories wouldn't have made an impact and possibly wouldn't have met you guys. Bayonetta 3 in that alternate universe was a hit. But because of a Russian development and a lack of mysteriousness, basically it's just another Bayonetta 2 game. A Bayonetta 2 part 2, if you may say. Bayonetta 3 and Platinum Games introduced a new style of marketing. Well, I think Cyberpunk 2077 did it first, but we use the marketing technique of mysteriousness. 
and with some loyal fans, I think it's going to be really effective. But don't get me wrong, it still would have been a great game in that alternate timeline, but we should give the developers and Kamiya-san time to finish this game to its full potential. Fortunately, in our timeline, they are still taking their time. If you don't want to wait for Bayonetta 3 anymore, or if you've lost your hype for it, the Rakunity will be here waiting for it for you. So keep those memes coming because they really are a mood. I'm Rakun, and happy theorizing. Yeah.